matter what hour your clock strikes here, it's always Halloween. And I'm always your haunted host, Luce Tomlin Brenner. Welcome to Small Frights Friday. On these very special episodes, I like to share a curated selection of calls from our All Hollows hotline and letters from our eek mailbag. If you think my eek sounded extra good today, that's because today I got my first negative COVID test in two weeks. My goodness, that feels so good to say. And here's hoping that I can go the rest of 2022 without getting COVID again. And the same to you, my sweet, precious lanterns. I hope you are holding up okay out there in Halloween land. I left the house for the first time in 16 days to celebrate three negative COVID tests in a row. And I went to my favorite outdoor cafe. It's called Trails and it's inside our largest park here in Los Angeles called Griffith Park. And I got my favorite sandwich and a vegan rhubarb pie that was amazing and a black tea. And I was sitting out on one of the picnic tables and one of the largest ravens that I've ever seen coasted down towards me. And I didn't even, I wasn't looking at it, but I just saw this like massive black creature out of the corner of my eyes and I almost ducked because I felt something coming towards my head and it was this massive raven and it just landed right next to me but on the ground and I just like shrieked out loud like not I wasn't scared but kind of like glee I was like oh my (laughs) you know essentially it was probably a little messier than that I probably had like a mouthful of sandwich (laughs) and I just like could not I I was just in a trance. Like I I was just like, oh my God, this raven, it was higher than the bench part of the picnic table. Like its head, I could see over the bench part and it was kicking around um, all of the dried, you know, forest debris to find little berries underneath. And it was picking them up and then throwing its little head back and like, like (laughs) getting it down its throat. Hopefully you can picture that. When I got one video of it, it's not very good quality. I was like too excited to really focus on the video aspect of it, but I'll post it on the Instagram for everyone to see. So in two weeks, the only Halloween thing I've done, well, other than work on this podcast nonstop, so I guess that's my Halloween thing, but <laughs> the, the other experience I had out in the world was this beautiful moment with this raven. I get to go back to the video store this week after a couple of weeks off. So I'm really looking forward to fully integrating back into the world and conversing with my fellow film lovers. And speaking of film lovers, we have our next Patreon movie party coming up very soon. This Sunday, to be exact, this Sunday, March 13th. At 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we will be screening the 2017 Irish Gothic horror film, The Lodgers, written by David Turpin and directed by Brian O'Malley, who also made the film Let Us Pray, P-R-E-Y. This story is about 1920s rural Ireland twins, Rachel and Edward, who share a strange existence in their crumbling family estate. Each night, the property becomes the domain of a sinister presence, which enforces three rules upon the twins. They must be in bed by midnight. They may not permit an outsider past the threshold. And if one attempts to escape, the life of the other is placed in in jeopardy. When troubled war veteran Sean returns to the nearby village, he's immediately drawn into the mysterious Rachel, who in turn begins to break the rules. The consequences pull Rachel into a deadly confrontation with her brother and with the curse that haunts them. Ooh, doesn't that sound like a delight? So I'm doing an extra special celebration and opening up the movie parties to every single Patreon Ghoul Gang member, not just those that are at the $10 level and up. So if you join Patreon today, tomorrow, Sunday morning, afternoon, 
At any level, you could join us for our movie party screening and discussion of The Lodgers starting at 5 p.m. specific specific standard time. It's a very specific time, Pacific standard time. <laughs> And another thing I'm opening up to all the patrons uh, this month is our Kitchen Witch, which is usually our $3 recipe club. But I'm opening up to all patrons. Again, we are celebrating this month because we hit 100 patrons, which has been my goal for a while. And I'm holding a little giveaway for three trick-or-treat bags to three lucky patrons. So if you sign up this weekend, you can be enrolled in that giveaway. You can be Come to our Kitchen Witch on Tuesday, and you can come to our screening on Sunday. So lots of fun things in store. That's right. We're actually doing a Kitchen Witch live together. Grim Turn Nathan and I are going to be cooking this month's recipe, stuffed jack-o'-lantern peppers, together in his kitchen with his direction because he is very patient and cooking-oriented, and I am not those things. So... If you want to see me be the comedic foil to Nathan being very organized and (laughs) on top of things, then tune in to our Instagram live and cook alongside of us at 6 p.m. Pacific Pacific Standard Time on Tuesday, March 15th. I think it'd be so fun to know that we're all cooking together. And if you don't want to cook, you can just show up and ask us questions about anything related to Halloween or the podcast. And I'll, you know, be doing questions throughout while Nathan works very hard and I dally away the time like I do when Isaac cooks things and I just stand in the doorway and go, when's it going to be ready? Can I eat these chips while I wait? Some other fun stuff going on on the Patreon this month is our second screening will be the following Sunday, Sunday, March 20th, also at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and We're going to be watching the 1993 American schlocky horror comedy Leprechaun (laughs) as voted by the ghoul gang. Uh, I put a whole list of Irish made horror films and you all wanted this one, which I can't blame you. It's very fun. Jennifer Aniston's big screen debut. So not only will we be watching this very silly movie and discussing it, I'm not sure how intellectual we're going to get on this one, folks. (laughs) But not only will I be there discussing this great movie with everybody, but on the 20th, we're going to be joined by a special guest, one of my favorite people in the world, Annie Rose Malamit from Girls, Guts, and Jello. She's going to be in LA for work that week, and she's going to come by and join us on the live stream. So if you want to see Annie and I talk about this film and get a chance to chat with Annie, who uh, actually is a member of the Ghoul Gang as well, but she has her own live streams every weekend, so she can't typically make ours. So this is a very nice treat. So if you want to join for that, it's another really fun thing we'll be doing. And then finally, this month's book club book, When Halloween Was Green, is an Irish Halloween horror comedy themed novel that's very fun. I had never read it before. I'm enjoying it so far. And we'll be meeting on the last Tuesday of this month, Tuesday, uh, March 29th at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to discuss this book together. So there's all kinds of fun things we're doing with the Ghoul Gang. And did you know that the only reason we're able to make this podcast is because of the Ghoul Gang? Thank you so much to every one of you who supports the podcast on Patreon. We had two new members sign up this week. So a hearty welcome to Allison Garrett and Rebecca Gonzalez. Such a delight to have you both in the Ghoul Gang. Thank you for making sure we're able to keep making this podcast. You guys, we're only $353 away from our next goal of $1,000 a month. And this is huge because when we hit $1,000, I'm going to host our very first in-person live event. Now it's going to be in Los Angeles because that's my home base and that's where I know the most people and have produced live comedy shows for years. So That's why it's my very first like major goal. So I would love to do this, you know, September, October this year. So we're really not that far away. 
$353. Now's the time to sign up. We've got so much stuff we're planning for this year. And as always, the more Patreon supporters we get, the more work we're able to do and the more ways in which we're able to grow the podcast. Last but not least, I do want to remind everybody that there is a new ghost story out now. It's by one of my favorite uh, horror writers and contributors, Tanana Reevedu, who you can see in the incredible horror documentary, Horror Noir, which is on Shutter, but also available in a physical release as well. It's an extensive documentary on black horror movies and the people who write them and create them and the importance of these stories. And if that feels like an area that you want to learn more about, it's a really excellent primer. Uh, Tanana Reeve is a, uh, a professor at UCLA who actually teaches a class on uh, Get Out and the Black Horror Experience. So it's a very, it's an intellectual documentary, but it's also a really accessible documentary. So if you want to hear one of her short stories, uh, then sign up for the Patreon. And it's actually the longest ghost story I've ever done for Patreon. It's about an hour. So you get a full hour of new, exciting entertainment. And uh, I really recommend her short story collection, Ghost Summer, which is where I got the story from this month's Patreon bonus episode. That's all the new business for now. So let's head on over to the All Hollows hotline and take a call. Hi, my name is Megan. And first off, I just want to say that I am so in love with this podcast. I love how this whole community has found each other and become friends. Uh, I know that finding another Halloween lover out in the wild is so rare so I think that having a place where we can all come together and talk about our obsession is just such a cool thing. Um, so I wanted to call today to talk about one of the ways that I spread out the Halloween spirit throughout the year. So about eight years or so ago, I created a hybrid holiday between Halloween and Valentine's Day that I like to call Hallowtimes. Um, we celebrate every year on February 13th, and of course, we all know the history of the spooky number 13, um, but I like to combine all my favorite things about both holidays. So if you can picture it, I like to make fancy gothic chocolate boxes that say things like, batty for you with a picture of a bat, or you're my boo with a cute little ghost. Um, I make these little heart sugar cookies, and I make an edible chocolate raspberry blood that I just splatter on top of the frosting. Um, I create a really fun playlist with creepy love songs like Under My Skin and Love Me Dead. Um, of course, I make a love potion cocktail that we pour over dry ice, and it smokes, and it just looks so cool. The possibilities are honestly just endless. Um so we throw a huge party every year, and I would just love for this to catch on. Um, if anyone wants to throw their own Hallow Times party this year, I would love to hear about it. Um, if I may give just a bit of a shameless plug, I make fun Halloween and Hallow Times crafts on my Etsy, but I'd love even just to follow on social media so we can all swap Hallow Times ideas. Um, my name is Wicked Fine by Design on TikTok, on Instagram, and on Etsy. And I would just love so much to hear what you all think and any ideas you might have for future Halloween parties. Thank you so much and happy Halloween. Megan, you are a sheer delight. Thank you for this incredible call. I'm sorry that I didn't get to it before Halloween's. And may I just say, I really like Halloween's a lot more than Halloween. But what do we do with the fact that like the entire quote unquote Halloween community says Valo Halloween? You know, as a Halloween creator, I feel the pressure to go with Halloween because that's where all the hashtags are, right? That's where everyone's marketing. But as someone who likes to go against the grain and be a little bit of a standout, I really think that Hallowtines sounds better and I think it maybe would be fun 
to use something in our community, which is actually a community, to set ourselves apart a little. So what do we think? Should we go with Hallow Times for everyone here in our little Halloween land? Uh, such a cute idea. All of your, like, you sound like an incredibly amazing cook. Like your chocolate boxes and your cookies. It all sounds so lovely. I think that we need the recipes for all of this. In fact, oh, this is such an exciting time. I'm going to just announce this new happening because Megan, I think specifically that you all appreciate it. And I know many of our listeners will as well. So this year I am collaborating with Joe from Displaced Snail, who is an incredible zine maker and uh, makes a Halloween zine every year, a queer horror zine. And uh, he made a collection of ghost story zines that I used two of for our Patreon episodes at the end of last year, the shell of sense and the shadow on the wall. And he and I have become friends and we are collaborating on making two It's Always Halloween zines this year for purchase, physical It's Always Halloween memorabilia to have in your home, including a Kitchen Witch themed one of recipes from all of you out there in Halloween land. So many of you have such cool Halloween uh, foods that you put together all throughout the year and including on the best night of the year. And I wanted to have a way for us to connect physically in that we could bring all of our family recipes, all of our traditions, all the things that we've just created for our own new communities in one physical little book. And that way we can be connected through food, which is such a meaningful part of our culture and the way that you show people that you love them and care for them. And it's such a big part of Halloween, right? We give treats to people. so. All of that to say, I am going to start collecting recipes from Lantern. So if you have a recipe that means something to you, please send it in an eek mail with a little blurb about it. If you want to be a part of the Kitchen Witch zine, we want to have a few recipes for every month so that we can keep Halloween going in a delicious way all year round. And Megan, I would love to get some of your Hallowtines recipes for our February section. Now I'm trying to collect all the materials by the end of May. So this is just the very first time you're gonna hear me talk about it. And uh, the Kitchen Witch zines will be ready for pre-order, hopefully at the end of August, if not sooner. So send in your favorite recipes. They can be personal. They can be something from a website. They can be something in an old cookbook. Uh, any pictures you have of the food or are you making the food and any little blurb about what the recipe means to you, how it helps you celebrate Halloween, either during the official calendar season or all year round and any personal details that you would want shared like, uh, you know, name, pronouns, email, or social media. And I would love to have as many lanterns on board as possible and have this special physical thing to hold, you know, like the hotline, like these small frights episodes, but in your hand, something forever that you can bring out all the time and cook something Halloweeny for yourself, even if there's not a new episode of the podcast. Okay, Megan, thank you for allowing me a short burst of a promo during your call. And in fact, you had your own promo and I went to look at all of your sites and it's so cool. So everyone definitely check out Megan's uh, work. It's Wicked Finds, F-I-N-D-S by design. And I'll link everything in the show notes. But I'm looking at your Etsy right now, and she has a whole section of Memento Mori stickers and one specifically that says, when death comes knocking at your door, will you wish you had done more? It has this great skull and this really beautiful wreath of flowers, and it really reminds me of our Memento Mori episode. And she has another great one that's a little skull, and it says, no one beats the reaper. I think this is such a great way to honor the history of Halloween. Uh, she's so many fantastic other like cards and posters and stickers. 
So definitely check out her shop. She has a lot of fun TikTok videos and a really engaging Instagram. So this is definitely a lantern that I know the rest of you will want to connect with. So Megan, thank you so much for loving the podcast. I'm so glad that you're enjoying the community. It really is so rare and special, so much so that I wasn't even anticipating this. As I said, when I started the podcast, I just wanted to nerd out about history and having so many of you creative, fascinating people just flock towards it really showed me how much we hunger for actual connection. You know, it's not enough to be like, we're in a Halloween community of just randos on Instagram following each other's like code oranges at Michael's, you know, there's something really special to actually getting together as it were and discussing things here on the Small Frights episodes and on the Discord, on the Patreon. And it is hard if you're from somewhere where there's not a lot of year round Halloween engagement, you can feel sort of like an outsider or a weirdo, which we all know is a good thing in this day and age to be a little bit on the outside of the mainstream, but you still need community. Even if you are an outsider, you want to be around other people who have, uh, you know, similarities to you so that you can enjoy life and not be isolated in loneliness. This is coming from someone who's just been inside for 16 days. So, oof, my God, I cannot handle much more isolation. That's why I practically fell over when a bird friend came and sat next to me. I was like, oh God, nature, are you here for me? So Megan, thanks again for this fantastically cheerful and creative call. It was a delight hearing from you and my apologies for not getting this out before Hallowtines. But now I think I would love to hear what people did do and if people celebrated Hallowtines or Halloween and how people out there make the holiday feel more like Halloween when they celebrate. And I also really like the idea of it being on the 13th because I know Galentine's Day has definitely like had its moments, but the specificity of this and the way that you can turn the 13, the magic of the number 13 into a Halloween celebration is just like really rings true for me. I really like that a lot. So Let's hear from everybody what everyone did this last February, and I hope that we can make Halotines catch on. I think that we should work on that goal together. All right, up next we have an eek mail that is a follow-up to last week's episode. The subject line is, I went to Phantom Carriage Brewery last night. Hello all, happy to hear you're back after your transition from your old job to Halloweening it up full time. I wanted to write an eek mail to let you know that yesterday while driving to and from work slash observation hours, I listened to the latest episode. When a lantern wrote in about a brewery themed after a silent horror film with a screening room and where it was located, I let out an audible, Carson, I'm going there after class. Turns out it's only five minutes away from Cal State Dominguez Hills, which is where I'm in a teaching credential program. After class and after some issues parking, I was able to get in. It was spooky themed indeed. The place was darkly lit with horror themed decorations, including a mural of Jack Torrance from The Shining in a small room. But my main interest was in the screening room. It was dark inside, but from what I could see, there was vintage looking furniture all around with classic horror movie photos framed on the walls. While I was there, I was able to catch the end of Vincent Price's House on Haunted Hill and the beginning of Phantasm. Unfortunately, they were playing loud music, so I couldn't actually hear the movie, could only see it. I saw a sign that says they do have special screenings on Thursday nights, so perhaps one should go then. I can report that their burger and fries were very good. Beer all tastes the same to me, so take that with a grain of salt when uh, I say it's fine. (laughs) Overall, it was cool to visit. Hopefully a Thursday opens up for me soon so that I can see a proper film screening there. I included some photos that I took last night. Thank you to the lantern who told us all about that place. Signed, S. S, I love 
love that you went there after you got the recommendation on the podcast. My Halloween heart is soaring through the sky right now. This is all I want is for us to reach out to each other like this and help each other have a more Halloween day every day. I think that these pictures are so cute. It looks like the Phantom Carriage Brewery did snag one of the elusive 12 foot skeletons. And I love that you caught some of House on Haunted Hill, the original, which is one of my all time favorite movies and was essentially my introduction to horror films. If we don't count, Return to Oz and Watership Down and Peter and the Wolf, those three technically non-horror movies, which severely disturbed me and put me out of my mind as a child. But I understand that a Halloween-themed bar might not show Watership Down, even though it's lots of bunnies covered in blood. Very upsetting. It is a shame that the screening room has music instead of just letting the movie play itself, but it's nice to hear that they do actual screenings, wouldn't it be fun to do a SoCal Lantern meetup at one of the Thursday night screenings? Thank you so much for being our reporter on the ground and letting us know what the experience was like. I'm going to share some of the photos on our Instagram. So everyone, make sure you check that out at It's Always Halloween podcast. And I'm also really happy to hear that the food was good. Sometimes at themed bars, I feel like they don't work as hard on the menu because they know they're going to just get people in because of the theme. That's kind of how I felt about Beetle House in Hollywood, which I talked briefly about last week. It was fun to go and to check it out, but the offerings were kind of bland in my opinion. And I do want to give just an extra special shout out again to our lantern, Diego, who is the one who wrote in about the Phantom Carriage Brewery on last week's episode, Birthday Ween. So thank you, Diego. You are, you've made a difference in our community already. And thank you, S, for reporting back to us. And I'm going to see about organizing a SoCal Lantern meetup there in April. Oh, and speaking of our SoCal Lanterns, Midsummer Scream is back the last weekend of July, and I will be there for the entire weekend along with, uh, I think, Pete for a day and uh, Grim Turn Nathan for a day or two. So I hope that if you are in the California area, you come out to this huge Halloween themed event. It's truly the most fun and helps kick off the Halloween calendar season. And while we're talking about Lantern meetups and get togethers, I do want to remind you to fill out the Google form that is in the show notes and also available in the It's Always Halloween link tree on Instagram. If you want to be a part of the local Lantern Society and help organize and host lantern hangouts and meetups in your region we've got a huge huge reply so far we've got people in all four corners of the united states and a bunch in the middle and some in england and the uk as well so keep your responses coming in and hopefully by may we will have enough people that we can send out lists and you can start organizing fun stuff to do for this calendar Halloween season. All right, well, we've got one more call. Let's head over to the hotline. Hey, Lucia, this is Andrew. Okay, this is my fourth attempt at leaving a coherent voicemail, and I promise I'm going to do it right this time. Um, <laughs> um, so first, I really want to thank uh, Lighthouse Ghost on Discord. Um I was sent some really wonderful live readings, um, uh, different post stories, um, from, uh, read by Peter Lorre, Basil Rathbone, Vincent Price. It's all been so wonderful. And I really want to, uh, just thank you so much for helping me. Um, I've listened to them at least, you know, one, you know, once a night for the last couple of days. And it's, it's been a real treasure just kind of looking at everything and going online and seeing what you've helped me with. So, Thank you so much. I really appreciate your help. Um, second, um, I'm wondering if there's going to be a uh, lantern meetup sometime this fall, maybe like a trip. I've, I've heard whispers of uh, Salem. Just thought I'd throw that out there, maybe, possibly. 
Um, last, I've um, I started up visiting some uh, Civil War battle sites, and um, I've always been fascinated with the uh, kind of haunted history of some of them. I know there's there's an inn by I believe it's Gaysburg that's allegedly haunted. Um, so I guess I'm I'm calling to ask if anyone has any information or experiences with visiting and um that I would love to go. It's on it's on my list, so I'm that's why I'm asking or calling. <laughs> All right. Um have a wonderful evening and I wish everyone a happy twenty twenty two. Hopefully it's a lot better than last year. Take care, have a spooky evening. Goodbye. Andrew, what a lovely call. See, this is what I'm talking about when I talk about community. I love that on the Discord, you were able to connect with someone who was able to help you find these stories you had been looking for for so long. And the Poe stories read by Peter Lorre and Vincent Price are so beautiful and special, and they are really hard to find online. So I'll link a couple of those. And uh, as Andrew said, they were uh, pulled by Lighthouse Ghost on Discord. That's their handle name. And that's just a really sweet little example, Andrew, of what's so fun about our Discord, which, you know, if you guys want to connect with each other and like regularly talk about Halloween stuff. So for just $3 a month or if you sign up annually, you get two months for free. So $30 a year, you can have access to the Ghoul Gang community and hunt down fun things for each other. So I will include some of those in the show notes so that you guys can get a taste of these really fantastic stories. And to answer your question about Gettysburg, I've actually never been there before, despite dating several straight men who are obsessed with history. In general, I'm not that interested in war sites, but there is a lot of haunted history connected to Gettysburg, and I hadn't really thought about how it might be fun for some paranormal experiences. Now, the bed and breakfast that I've heard stories about is called the Battlefield Bed and Breakfast, and it's actually um, an 1809 Civil War home that's on that was on the Gettysburg battlefield, and supposedly their barn is quite haunted. I'll link their website in the show notes. They seem very welcome to paranormal investigators, uh, professional or amateur. They actually have a whole page on the haunted histories and different tours that are local to Gettysburg. So this page is pretty great. There's a lot of detail here, and it looks like they also do a ghost story around the fire night a couple times a month. It's called uh, Ghost Stories with Lance Windish. From their website, it says, Come hear silly and spooky stories around the bonfire on Battlefield Bed and Breakfast's gorgeous 30-acre nature preserve on the South Cavalry Battlefield. Fun for the whole family. Only $15 a person seems pretty cute. Would love to hear from lanterns out there in Halloween land. Have you done any ghost exploring in Gettysburg? Have you stayed at any of the haunted bed and breakfasts? I have only stayed at bed and breakfasts when I was a kid. And my family was kind of doing a little historic tour through Michigan and the UP. So I've always wanted to stay at a haunted bed and breakfast. But uh, Isaac is a little turned off by what he makes up would be maybe too chatty uh, company in the mornings <laughs> over breakfast. The idea that you have to uh, kind of commune with everybody else who is staying there. I'm much more of the outgoing gregarious sort, whereas Isaac wants to drink coffee with a cat on his lap and be left alone. So <laughs> we have yet to make a bed and breakfast um, vacation. So definitely want to hear from people who have. In fact, there's a lot of really cute B&Bs in Salem, and I would really like to stay at one of those. I don't have any official travel plans for October yet. A lot ha is kind of riding on what my new film surprise, which is still in the editing process, what film festivals it gets into this fall. I like to try to go and um, 
travel when the film gets in places and meet other filmmakers and see other horror films. And there is one called the Salem Horror Fest, which is a festival I've been wanting to get into for a long time. So I'm hanging some of my hopes on that right now. However, I will also say, um, as my $1,000 goal on Patreon is to host a live show here in LA, I have a goal for when I reach $2,000 on Patreon, which is hosting a live show in Salem. So when we get there, we're definitely doing an It's Always Halloween event in Salem, but I think it would be really fun to have a meetup there before then. Of course, I don't have to be there. All of the East Coast lanterns can still put something fun together, and I would definitely blast it out and let everyone know. So let me let me know what you guys are planning this year. It would be fun to, to, to be able to promote some more get-togethers amongst the Luceo lanterns of Halloween land. Okay, so don't forget to send in your information to the Local Lantern Society. Don't forget we've got two awesome film parties coming up. One this Sunday, March 13th, where we're watching The Lodgers. One next Sunday, March 20th, where we're watching Leprechaun with Annie Rose Malamit from Girls, Guts, and Jallo. We've got our book club on March 29th where we're discussing when Halloween was green. And we've got a live Instagram Kitchen Witch cooking session coming up together this Tuesday, March 15th. <gasps> Beware the Ides with Nathan, our grim turn at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Gosh, there's so much fun stuff coming up. Thank you to all of the lanterns who called in today to help make this episode special and thank you to the ghoul gang for keeping us going and providing us with such a great sense of community every single day oh and i forgot that i promoted the new zine so send in your recipes your blurbs your ideas if you want to be a part of it we are taking submissions uh, write to us at it's always Halloween podcast at gmail.com. And of course, you can send all of your Halloween stories and pictures and fun stuff there. And we'll be taking submissions for the zine through the end of May. And if you have another kind of Halloween memory or a ghost story or you make something and you want to share it with us, you can also call the All Hallows Hotline at 802 532 DEAD. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at It's Always Halloween Podcast. If you want to help produce every episode of It's Always Halloween and join a really in-depth and supportive community, you can head over to our Patreon or click the link in our show notes. It's patreon.com slash it's always Halloween. There's a $1, $3, $6, $10, $13, and $16 level. So honestly, there is something there for every budget. You can support the podcast for as low as $10 a year if you want. What That's like less than going to the movie. Movies. You could also support the podcast with a one time donation to our tip jar, $30 or more, and you get to be the single producer of an episode of It's Always Halloween. And you could also buy our merch on Redbubble. All of those links are in the show notes. And if you need a free and easy way to support the podcast, write us a review. We love the reviews on Apple Podcasts. Uh, the five-star ratings really help us move to the top of the Halloween podcast stack. Gives us a little air of legitimacy. And in fact, we just got a short, sweet, absolutely perfect review that I'm going to share with you in case you're like, I don't know, I'm not a writer, what do I write? This is just lovely. The subject line is, what a treat, what a dream, what a night. <laughs> An absolutely delightful listen when one is wandering about one's crumbling ancestral home or even just doing the dishes after work. Informative, entertaining, and the Patreon is a delight. 10 out of 10. And that review is by Ivory Sorrows. Ivory, thank you so much. This made me giggle. I read it multiple times. It's very cute. I like the combination of um, being in a crumbling home and also still just needing to do the dishes. <laughs> Even gothic ghost women whirling around their castle with a candelabra in their hand need to wash a plate and fork after they use them. 
those reviews really do make such a big difference. So thank you, Ivory Sorrows, and thank you to every Lantern who has taken the time to write a few nice words and let new people searching the word Halloween on Apple Podcasts see that this is a fun, boisterous show that is worth their time. And hey, you know what else? Not only are we on Apple Podcasts, but we're also on the NPR One app where you can go and subscribe and tell Ira Glass that you love us. This episode of It's Always Halloween was uh, written and performed by me, Luce Tomlin Brenner, with wonderful help from our lanterns, Megan, S, and Andrew. We could not do it without you, and we could not do it without the Patreon Ghoul Gang. The editing, sound design, and theme music are by the incomparable Pete Burns. Thanks, Pete. And thank you to all of you for listening to yet another episode of It's Always Halloween. Please come back next time. Unless you start obsessing over your new raven friend and go to live with them in their nest in the trees. (laughs) 